Like Memphis, they, they take care of their players, they, they love their guys, and, and I just think that that's really cool to, uh, to, to bring light to the zoo and, and to honor him. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a great Perk, thing. I don't but know look, who's a better They dunker. couldn't have found a tiger, a baby tiger. <laughs> they couldn't have found a baby tiger. Well, that's what John Moran is, a I tiger. Say, you name him after a tiger, not a giraffe. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, he's such a good dunker. You want the giraffe can dunk because of the, the height. I, I, okay, maybe not. Um, <laughs> welcome into the jump. I'm Rachel Nichols. Today, I'm joined by our resident head coach, Mr. David Fisdale, and NBA champion, Kendrick Perkins. Coming up, guys, the Sixers made a couple moves on draft day. Mm -hmm. Is this the start of something bigger in Philly, though? We will discuss that a little later. First, though, man... Some unfortunate breaking news to report. Clay Thompson suffering that season-ending Achilles tear. We knew when we woke up this morning the news wasn't going to be good, but boy, really not good. Now, based on the type of tear, our Adrian Wojnarowski reports that Thompson has been told he is expected to make a full recovery. But this is such rough news. Clay, of course, missed all of this past season with the ACL. He was an Ironman before that, so crucial to the Warriors. Take a look at the past five seasons, including nearly 22 points per game on 40% three-point shooting in his last full season that he played. Perk, mm. what is your reaction to hearing Clay being out for at least another year? I hate it, Rachel. I was looking forward to, to watching the Splash Brothers. The game missed Steph and Clay together. Both of those guys together are must-see TV. And I was looking forward to seeing how they was going to bounce back together. And now without Clay, a guy that could, to, could score 70 points in three quarters with only taking 11 dribbles, that is just, you know, it hurts. Because I was looking forward to watching Clay. He's actually one of my favorite players in the NBA. Yeah, you know, Rach, I think that uh, what I was looking forward to was seeing the West Coast battles, right? The Lakers, Warriors, Clippers, mm -hmm. Warriors. I mean, these, they, they add a whole other element to the championship run. We know that these guys are contenders, and so not having Clay really knocks them out of the loop of that. Uh, now I think it's about them fighting and getting a, trying to get home court in the playoffs if they can. A lot of weight is going to fall on the rookie, and a lot of weight is going to fall on uh, Wiggins. Uh, obviously, we know what Steph and Draymond are about, but those other guys are going to have to step up around them if they want to make a decent uh, seeding in the playoffs. Yeah, and look, we were hoping maybe Lakers-Warriors could be a Christmas Day game, oh. to your point, Fizz, and now it wouldn't have that same sort of star Ooh. power. And it's not just Clay what he does individually as a player, although that is incredible. It's the way he makes Steph Curry, right, so much more effective. Him being a threat changes the math for Steph. Fizz, if you were coaching against the Warriors, once Clay is removed from the equation, how does that change the way you defend Steph? Well, I definitely it opens up opportunities to really go after him and, and to, to really like put two people on him, double him at all times, really try to make it as difficult as possible for him to have big scoring nights. But again, it's going to come down to those other guys. I really believe that, you know, the Wiggins and, and the Rook is going to have to really step up. Draymond's going to probably have to have one of his best years ever if this team is really going to be serious. Look at this. I mean, they got a lot of spots uh, that yeah, with some unknown names that they got to fill in. Fizz, I'm right there with you. Look, Steph Curry proved to us over these past couple of years and over the course of his career that he could beat you single-handedly. So guess what? I'm going to the Nick Nurse strategy. I have to go into a boxing one. I have to trap him until he gives up the ball. Mm -hmm. But look, like Fizz was saying, Rachel, it's time for Wiggins to step up. And one thing that the Warriors do have that they do have that's great over there, they have culture. Yes. They have a great foundation. From Steve Kerr to Ron Adams to Mike Brown to the front office, Bob Myers, and then you go to the players. Steph Curry and Draymond Green, still the two heart and souls of their team, and then you add Andrew Wiggins, where now he don't have to worry about being the number one pick anymore. He could just go out there and play the game freely and be a second option or a third option. Well, now a second option second, guy yep. since Clay out, but he don't have to be that main focal point. And I got big plans. Look, people don't know how good James Wiseman is, and I can't wait 
till he get his NBA debut for he can show the world that he's ready. He has a lot of Kevin Garnett in this game, and I can't wait to see this kid play. Yeah. Well, that is certainly high praise coming from someone who played alongside and won a championship alongside Kevin Garnett. If he has that kind of trajectory, he can be very, very grateful. And look, we'll see. Certainly no one's crying for the Warriors. They have a two-time MVP still on the team. They have, as you said, the number one overall pick with Wiggins. They have the number two overall pick now, this rookie with James Wiseman. They've got Draymond Green, former Defensive Player of the Year. But boy, I, I don't know if Warriors culture can make up for a guy who can shoot the way Clay can shoot without needing the ball in his hands that often or that much and uh, no, no, no dribbling required. We'll see how they make up for this. It is a blow for the entire NBA. I do want to move on to the Sixers, though, guys, because they made a couple deals last night before the draft. They traded Al Horford in a deal that centered around Danny Green. Then during the draft, they sent Josh Richardson and the 36th pick to Dallas for sharpshooter Seth Curry. Seth, by the way, the son-in-law of Sixers head coach Doc Rivers, married to Callie Rivers. So cheers to family reunions there. Now, Fizz, what do you think of these moves? And do you think they are setting themselves up for something even bigger? I do. I think I really like the moves they made. I think that they're making the main thing the main thing to still want to expose lines and they're trying to create space for those two guys. And Seth Curry is one of the best shooters in the NBA, hands down. There's no other way around it. I think getting Al Horford to another team and taking two bigs off the court uh, for Ben Simmons is really going to open up the floor for him. Uh, you know, because I think you can see it when Ben Simmons was was playing just with Al Horford or just with Embiid, he looked great. But it was tough on him when he had both guys out there on the floor with him. So they're really opening up the court right now and really trying to make this guy's talent shine. And I think he, Seth can play next to him easily because he can take bigger uh, matchups. Seth can take smaller guys. Uh, but I think Moray is really coming in there with a plan to, to, to open up the floor and get that three ball going so those guys have a lot of space to operate. I agree. And, and, and the number one thing that they did, that Daryl Moore and Elton Brand did yesterday, because I believe not only did they win in the draft, but they won the whole entire day yesterday, even with trades, is that <laughs> they saved a lot of money. So now they could go out there and get some free agents. But I'm with you. Adding a Danny Green and a Seth Curry open up the court and it provides space, and especially for Ben Simmons to go to work and be able to have those drives. Driving gaps, and then also you still, you still Tyrese Maxey at, at, at the at number twenty one, a guy that I thought was going to go in the top ten, yes. and he slipped all the way to to number twenty one, and you're able to grab him. And you got Doc Rivers over there that's uh, that's fired up about coaching this team, and a new Joel B. If Joel B. is in shape. He could possibly be the MVP <laughs> next year or in the top for the runners. I'm telling you, Doc yes, Rivers is going to have that effect on him like De like he did with DeAndre Jordan. I totally agree, Perk. And I, but I think the best part of this whole thing is Doc gets to be a grandpa with his little, with his little grandbaby right next door. <laughs> so right. I think that's the coolest <laughs> thing uh, that he gets to be with his family. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is... Excellent. And look, as you guys said, it, this gets you off of Horford's money. So I don't know yeah. where they are in James Harden trade talks or anyone else, but it does give them more flexibility to just be a few moves away from a big salary player. But even in itself, even if this is not setting up anything in the future, love Seth Curry opening space for those guys. Love Danny Green with his championship experience. Love Tyrese Maxey. I'm with you, Perk. This was a steal. I don't know how he fell that far. But also, I'm super impressed mm. yet again with the other side of that first deal, Sam Presti, who knew that he could take that Al Horford contract <laughs> because of some of the other contracts he's already given up. They don't have that Chris Paul book on the books anymore. And he picked up another draft pick, guys. Pretty soon, the NBA draft is going to be mm. just Sam Presti, <laughs> and he's going to have all 30 picks, and he's just going to decide, what order should I draft everyone in? And he can just go off. I think he's like a three. I'll pick him at a five. I'll pick I think that's the future. We're going to see that with Sam. It's just been incredible. Got, all right, I do yeah. want to shift our attention to the draft we just had. Great job by the NBA. Yeah. Fantastic work by our colleagues in Bristol. Mm. I, I was so impressed. I hope this is the only virtual draft, but it was a cool one. Perk, which franchise impressed you most last night with their selections? 
the New York Knicks, the New the New York Knicks, t- get getting the chance to get Ob Toppin at number eight. I look, I love it. The Knicks finally did something right. They have been messing up besides signing Coach Fizdale. <laughs> Thank you, Park. Besides <laughs> that, they finally did something right by drafting OB Toppin. Rachel, this kid is full of excitement. He's electrifying. He's gonna sell ticket he tickets. He's must see TV. He had 107 dunks last year that led the co- that led in, he led in college. And by the way. Look, he is 22 years old, and he still got room to grow. He reminds me a lot of Blake Griffin, so I think the Knicks won just by being able to draft him with the number eight pick. I I actually really agree with you, Perk. I think that the kid is electric. He's a hometown kid. He's a New York City uh, talent. Um, and I mm. just think that he is gonna he's gonna be a guy as, as they continue to build this team around him. And I know they got a lot of criticism for not taking a guard in the draft, but I really think this team is more built for a veteran guard to come in and help them kind of mold the whole thing. I don't think a young guard is the guy that's gonna come in and get this team to the next level. So this kid coming in, already having a fan base, already having people that understand what he brings to the table, I think is a great pick for the Knicks, and I'm really happy to see that they added him to the roster. That's not, it was really sweet. He was so emotional when he was picked, talking about playing for his hometown. This Is there anyone else you think did a great job last night? Well, you know, obviously, I look at it this way, like, I wish Clay Thompson didn't go down, because you add Wiseman to that group, and all of a sudden now, you're like, wait a minute, this is electric, you know? And so, mm-hmm. you know, going into, before we, I knew Clay was going down, I was going to say, this kid here is, is just the steal for them because you got two Hall of Famers sitting mm-hmm. over there, possibly mm-hmm. three of Draymond's defenses recognized, and you're adding a top player to that roster. Uh, if they still had Clay, that could be just a special group. Uh. A lot and of Rachel, people I will say Archer this, Coach Fizz, all, all, top, all top three picks went to the right team. Yes. You went to uh, Minnesota, they took the right, they made the right mm-hmm. choice by getting Anthony Edwards, you know, uh, Golden State getting James Wiseman, and then you have the Charlotte Bobcats uh, getting uh, LaMelo Ball. But look, Rachel, one of my sleepers that I told you about, Charlotte Hornets, excuse me. I like it, Rachel, one of my sleepers that I told you about, Danny Grip, Danny Ainge, when got him, Peyton Pritchard, that yep. point guard went first round. I he saw wasn't that. projected. It was a sleeper I told you about. He's going to do wonders for the Celtics. Well, look, Perk, we always talk about how Boston, on all the teams you've been to, Boston is the one in your heart, and apparently you could be an assistant GM now. So we'll, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> Coming up, though, Perk's still going to work the rest of this show. <laughs> the top pick in last night's draft, Anthony Edwards is going to join us. He'll talk about his fit with the Timberwolves. But first, it's time for today's Distant Replay. This is brought to you by Mar- York, when you rep in my city, it's, it's amazing. Walk that moment here, those tears kept falling. This is the best moment of my life right here. I don't like this. Nothing compared to this moment. Right here. Cue me and do the clapping and be like, action. It's a make or miss league. Maybe a little more funny than that. I didn't I don't know what the I don't know what, what am I make or missing? It's a make or miss league. <laughs> Cut that. Ah, uh, Jimmy, 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 thank you, sir. Make cameos. Cole Anthony went number 15 overall to the Magic, and look, Spike Lee, friend of Cole's dad, Greg Anthony, was there celebrating. <laughs> now, Fizz, given all of Spike's issues with James Dolan, do you think that Spike is just, he's a Magic fan now, what do you think? Not a chance. Spike is Knicks till he died. They ain't no, he, he, can't, he can't go cheer for, for the Magic's full time. Obviously, he's gonna cheer because of the kid and, and his relationship with him, but he's a Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Miss Kleenex. It was an emotional night last night. One of the perks of a virtual draft is that you see all the families. So our perk, what did it mean to you to see all that emotion? <laughs> oh, it meant a lot, Rachel. I mean, you know, these kids been waiting on this all their lives and, and being drafted and hearing your name called. It's the best feeling in the world, and you know I was sitting there watching. And I shed a couple of tears myself, you know, just watching. And it's good to be around your family. I think that makes it even more emotional because it was virtual. Mm-hmm. 
I love it because you see all the people in that kid's life who helped him get to this moment. Nobody does it on their own. And so we got to see a bit of that last night, which was pretty great. All right. We also saw some Fitz man make drift despite the draft picks being in their homes. Guys suited up. Fitz, <laughs> who had the best look last night? I think hands down, we got to go with Denny because of his background. Forget what he was wearing. He was in the wine cellar. <laughs> I wanted to go. I wanted to go celebrate with him because he had the best setup. The guy looked like James Bond sitting up in there. So I'm rolling with him. That's my kind of guy. I like my red wine. My extra piece of information for you is that he did that in Israel, where it was like four in the morning. So the fact that he was rolling with that behind him at 4 a.m. just it just makes him cooler, Fizz. No just doubt. makes him cooler. <laughs> All right. Miss Storage, RJ Hampton, got drafted by the Bucks, but the pick actually belonged to the Nuggets, and his dad couldn't find the right hat in that drawer of hats that, you know, the NBA set and all the draftees. So he just took the Bucks hat and he threw it against the wall. I don't know. Perk, you like that approach? Creativity? <laughs> I mean, that's just dad being dad. If you ever met RJ dad, Rachel, he is just, what you just saw just now, that's how he is in real life. Full of energy, full of emotions. That's him. So I expect him to do things like that. Great guy, though. <laughs> well, it got the message across, and that's all that you need on draft night. All right, guys, while we are talking about the draft, <laughs> we've got a guest coming on the show. He was featured, oh, I don't know, pretty early last night. Here's a little recap for you. With the first pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Anthony Edwards. Feeling like a man. It's an indescribable feeling. My grandmother's right here and my mother's right here. They're with me at all times. It's going to be fun, man. I got two superstars alongside of me, so I'm just ready to get to work. Like a man. And now joining the jump, Anthony, you were on with us last week, but I couldn't say it then. I can say it now. The number one overall pick in the 2020 draft, Anthony Edwards. That's going to be with you forever. You will forever be number one. What does that mean to you to be the first player selected? I mean, it means everything in the world. I mean, like, I didn't think it was going to happen. Nah, all the work I put in, I just feel like I finally got rewarded. Absolutely. Uh, you talked after the draft last night and you said the player in the NBA you were most excited to face was Kevin Durant. What about facing KD excites you? Most people would be kind of running off the court. I got to be honest, Anthony. Uh, probably just because he's so good. I mean, he's seven feet. He can uh, score the ball. He can drill the ball like a guard. He can pass. He can defend. And I just feel like he's the best all around scorer ever. Well, certainly there's some bravery involved in being a rookie and saying that you want to go one-on-one -on -one with KD. So I appreciate the guts you're showing there right away. Um, you know, it's funny. We've been talking about you so much. I feel like everyone's been talking about you. Your ears must be burning over the last couple of days. And one of the things that got attention was you were quoted saying that you really just can't get into watching basketball if you're not playing. You're a football guy. And a lot of people were surprised to hear that coming from an elite prospect. Can you clarify what you meant and what you intend to do once you're in the league now? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. I, I I meant like like football is fun to watch, but I love basketball to death. So mm -hmm. like, I love to watch basketball anytime. Like the playoffs, I watch the playoffs games back to back because they competing for real. Like they playing defense, but just regular season games. Some teams don't always compete. They don't bring it every time. So I love to watch the playoffs, like the post games, the post games. Well, it's funny, Vince Carter said about you that uh, he said, look, he goes, I played on the Hawks last year and a lot of those young guys don't watch between games. They don't watch other players' games. He said, I told them that they should. Is it something that you can start doing and picking up even on your off nights, what other guys around the league are doing? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, watching film is, is, is the best thing to do to get better. Learn your defenders, learn the people that you're going to be guarding. I feel like it gives you an edge on, against everyone that you're going to play. Well, I'll give you that, by the way, a lot of our guys really love still watching football, too. So you're allowed to still do that Monday, Thursday, <laughs> Sunday, yeah. Saturday. Sunday, definitely. Whenever yeah. it comes up. You got, you got opportunities for both. <laughs> um, you Most are definitely. headed to Minnesota. You will join Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell. How do you expect to fit in on that team? 
Um, I expect to uh, fit in perfectly. I mean, I got a best shooting big. I got a nice, a very good scoring guard. Um, you know, I feel like my playmaking ability is going to complement them well. And then if if they, you know, want to go to the corner, I can score the ball too if I, if I have to. Have you spoken to Cat or D'Lo by any chance? Yeah, I spoke to D'Lo last night and this morning. What did he have to say to you? All uh, he said was like, congratulations, let's get to work. It was so special last night to watch you, to be around family, to have those portraits of your mother and grandmother behind you. What has been the reaction you've gotten from that over the past, I don't know, I guess it's been 16 hours. Oh yeah, everyone loved it. Everyone loved my idea of having uh, my grandmother and mother next to me and then my family around me. I felt like it was a brilliant idea because no matter what, I keep them with me at all times. So I feel like it's the only way I could show them off. Well, you've got two portraits now to move with you to Minnesota. We wish you the best of luck as you get ready for training camp, and I'm sure we'll check in with you along the way. It's been so much fun talking to you this past month or two, and we will be watching you from here on out. Thanks for joining us. Most definitely. Thanks for having me. Coming up, the Bucks' deal to sign and trade Bogdan Bogdanovich seems to have fallen through, and now he's entering restricted free... Presented by Dell. Welcome back to The Jump. Joining us now is our NBA sideline reporter, ESPN LA radio host, George Sedano. Love it when you're back with us in the studio, George. And we want to ask you about the Bucks because they hit some off-season road bumps last night. Adrian Wojnarowski reporting Bogdan Bogdanovich plans to enter restricted free agency. Obviously, this is a big switch from earlier this week. It unravels the sign and trade deal the Kings and Bucks had negotiated just days earlier. Bogdanovich will now hit the market. The Bucks will have to look elsewhere to upgrade their roster. George, how does this look for all parties involved here? Rachel, there's no other way to slice this. It's an embarrassing blunder, really, all across the board by everybody. Everyone involved here should look silly or feel has to feel silly in this situation because this is about dotting the i's and crossing the t's like you know like it, 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 this is bigger than that actually how do you not know that a player wants to go in a sign and trade to a specific spot like that should be i don't know question number one potentially when you're making a deal like this whether it's the sacramento kings trying to figure that out or the milwaukee bucks maybe engaging with his agent uh, like, those are all things that should have been discussed early on in this process. Yeah, and but at the end of the day, the, the hard part is that the Bucks are really missing out on a, on a tough, good basketball player that really could have helped their team get better. The thing that they've been trying to add the most is shooting and playmaking. And with Drew Holiday, of course they did that. But this kid would have added more of that, and that would have solidified their team a little more to give them a chance to retain Giannis. Oh, I agree. I think it would have took them over the top if they would have been able to, if the deal would have went through to actually win the championship. And I said that with him in the lineup, they actually have the best, they would have had the best starting five in the game today. But it goes to show me that somebody's about to get a big bag. Somebody's about to get his lettuce. That's what it goes to show me. He's about to sign a huge deal in his free agency. So, I mean, you know, I can't knock that because I always preach to the younger, the younger guys and that was coming in up under me is that sometimes we get caught up in – you know uh, that basketball is entertainment, but it's a job. And your first priority is to get your money and secure your future, and then everything else falls second and third and fourth and so forth. Yeah, and look, it's going to be restricted free agency for him. So anything that he does go out and get from another team, the Kings have the opportunity to match if they want to. But it does change. As you say, that mm -hmm. roster you were so high on earlier this week, Perk. I want to remind everyone what the Giannis Supermax extension would look like. Now, he can sign this before the start of the season. That would give him an extra $83 million that he can't get anywhere else. But he could also elect to just wait a year, see how this season goes with the Bucks. Remember, he will still be Supermax eligible next summer. So he's not necessarily deciding to leave this on the table, just possibly postponing it by an offseason. Do you think after all the changes this week, Perk, is Giannis more or less likely to stay with the Bucks and to sign that deal this summer instead of waiting till next summer? I think he... 
I think he I think he's going to sign this summer. I think he's going to sign soon. And here's why. Drew Holiday was the deciding factor. Uh, and, and, and I think the guy that moved the goalposts for this situation. And here's why. When you look at it, the Clippers were trying to get Drew Holiday. The Lakers were trying to get Drew Holiday. The Nets were trying to get Drew Holiday. Every, the Celtics. Everyone knows the value of Drew Holiday. And add Drew Holiday to this Milwaukee Bucks makes them a, a contender automatically and they have a elite big three and now Giannis could go to someone down the stretch that could close out games and I, I, I think he's satisfied with just the addition of Drew Holiday along with already having Chris Middleton. Well, Perk, look, I agree with you that I think he's likely to sign the extension, but if it were me, I, I would take a wait-and-see approach because of literally what we just talked about. The fact that Bogdanovich is not there. Um, look, Drew Holiday is an excellent player. He's actually a very good player, but he went for a haul that was similar to Paul George, who's a six-time All-Star as opposed to a one-time All-Star. That deal looked a lot better when it included Bogdan Bogdanovich as part of a larger deal. If I'm Giannis, I would sit and wait because, again, to Rachel's point, he could sign this same deal a summer from now. Like, I don't think that there's any reason to rush into this. I'd like to see what this roster looks like and what my championship aspirations look like in Milwaukee before putting pen to paper. Yeah, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, Drew Holiday is a heck of a player. He definitely filled an important position for them. But Giannis does not have to rush this decision. Uh, you saw that Kevin Durant ended up signing a big deal still after injury, and that's usually the fear for players that's going into big money max deals like this. And so I think no matter what, Giannis is still going to be a max regardless of what happens. So he doesn't have to rush it. But I think the Bucks are hoping that their actions that they're taking are going to show him that they're serious about building a championship around him. Not just the Drew Holiday deal, but the deal they tried to make. The fact that they're out there actively trying to improve this team is showing Giannis that they're serious about keeping him there. Yes. And look, none of us can get inside Giannis's head or heart. What's important to him might be slightly different than what's important to all of us. There's definitely an appeal. I understand it, especially if you grew up the way we know that Giannis did, right? To be able to just sign a piece of paper and have hundreds of millions of dollars guaranteed to go into your bank account. That has a lot of weight. Um, also, we know that he <laughs> would prefer to stay in Milwaukee. He said that a bunch of times. He said, all things being equal, I would like to be here. The question the question is, how much do you feel the organization can continue to do and do you want to put that extra year of pressure on them or do you want to take off that extra year of pressure on yourself? Because I promise, and we've seen guys go through this too, if he punts for another off season, he will get asked about this a lot. His teammates will get asked about it a lot and that environment is different than if the deal is just done. But we'll have to see. Plenty of guys say, you know what, I'm comfortable with waiting. I'm going to wait. We'll have to see if he wants to wait. If he does sign this offseason, it will be two years before he could be traded. So we'll have to see if he wants to do that and commit to Milwaukee for those few years or not. All right, guys, coming up, tough news. We've already talked about it on the show. Clay Thompson will miss the season. I'm Rachel Nichols, proud Wildcat over here, still with Coach David Fisdale, George Sedano, Kendrick Perkins. We don't normally have great football seasons, guys. I got to pub it whenever I can. Shout out to Coach. <laughs> Shout out to our coaching staff at Northwestern. Um, let's revisit the top five picks of last night's draft, guys. Anthony Edwards, who of course just joined us, went first. Then James Wiseman went to the Warriors, followed by LaMelo Ball going to the Hornets. Patrick Williams and Isaac Okoro rounding out the top five. And there was some speculation leading up to the draft as to whether the Warriors would trade or keep the second pick. They did settle on Wiseman. George, do you think that was the right pick for them considering that they likely already knew about the Clay News when they made the pick? Rachel, I love the pick, actually. Let's talk about it just from a pure basketball perspective at this point. They need size, right? The champion Los Angeles Lakers have size, and you need to be able to compete with that. Plus, he's a kid that's still growing in a lot of different ways, both physically, from a maturity standpoint, and, of course, his game. Like, he can be more well-rounded as the years go by. I am curious to see, though, if the Warriors maybe adjust their style a little bit to involve him more in the offense without Klay Thompson now being available to them. I'm curious to see that. And I don't think there was a real trade opportunity for them to bring in another superstar that could help them catapult them to that championship level where they would be a potential lock to be one of the top two or three teams in that conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, I think 
the one thing that we're going to see out of, out of this kid and, and with the Warriors is can they survive the land of the Wolves? Because <laughs> that's what they just fell back into with losing Clay. <laughs> with Clay, top four team, yep. right? Without Clay, they are in the land of Wolves fighting for their playoff lives. And this kid, if they make it and they can have an impact in the playoffs, this kid will be a big part of that. I think he's the perfect fit because he doesn't get in anyone's way positionally. They needed size, just like George said, that he's athletic. He's a guy that can get him offensive rebounds, second shots, and he's going to benefit with just playing next to Steph because he's going to draw so much attention. This kid's going to shoot a very high percentage at the rim. Look, I love the pick, and I'm, I'm with both of you guys. I, I think you cannot pass up on a 7'1 athletic guy like James Wiseman, who's been mentored by Penny Hardaway and Mike Miller. So he's been already training NBA style anyway. And then you throw him alongside a former defensive player of the year like Draymond Green to show him the ropes and mentor him. The sky's the limit for him. Look, James Wiseman t said, I do not want to go number one to the Minnesota Timberwolves because Carl Anthony Towns and I will not fit well together. That told me a lot. That said a lot about him. That said that, hey, I want to show the world that I'm that guy. I'm very talented and the sky's the limit. And I really think that he's going to be a future all-star and that he's going to have a phenomenal year this year. And he might be the rookie of the year. Yeah, and look, I think this was a long-term pick. It's not just a pick for this next season with Clay being hurt, even no matter how much they knew the severity of Clay's injury. This is a conference where you just had two bigs on a team that won the NBA championship. So I think this is a long-term play for the Warriors. Mm. That being said, it does leave them in a tough position without Clay there. You wonder if in the free agent market that will change what they are looking for. And we will get into that tomorrow because, hey, we got a whole three-hour free agency show on the jump. <laughs> but with Clay out for this season, do you think, George, that this changes – where you see them in the West, obviously, as Fizz said, they're not in that top four, but we got the play-in game now coming into play for the seventh and eighth seeds. And I know that Vegas has been changing some of the odds without Clay as well. Yeah, Rachel, it, it certainly changes everything for them. They were a top four team in the Western Conference, in my opinion, if they were totally healthy. And now I look at them as, I don't know, anywhere between five and ten, basically, because the West is just so hard. And, and I know maybe they get in that play-in game and, and they can get, you know, catch fire or whatever i just don't buy that without clay thompson we're talking about one of the greatest shooters in the history of the sport that they can catapult themselves into the upper echelon of the western conference and look maybe they can make a move to your point we were talking about bogdan bogdanovich earlier they have a 17 million dollar cap exemption right now i would take a shot and see if you can get him to get into that fit into that cap exemption if you can do that then maybe i feel better about their chances I totally agree. I think that the Warriors are not sitting over there pouting. They know that Clay's hurt and they have to deal with that, but they have an opportunity now to still add some valuable pieces to this team that can move them a little bit away from the bottom of that playoff run. Uh, again, you still got champions on this roster, so these guys are going to have an edge on a lot of these young teams that's fighting for those last spots as well. But I just think if they can spend the rest of their money right, they can still add some serious pieces to this team that can make them very dangerous moving forward. I, I agree. Look, I don't have the Warriors falling no further than about the set, the six or seven seed without Klay Thompson, and here's why. One is that I would never bet against that green eyed assassin in <laughs> Steph Curry, who is one of the best point guards to ever touch the basketball, right? And then I got faith in Andrew Wiggins. This is the first time that he's able to come around and be in a, a great culture, a great environment where he's going to be around Steph Clay and have Steve Kerr and, and Mike Brown and Ron Adams to put him in position to be successful. And I think he's going to embrace this opportunity. Draymond Green, he's been working his tail off. He didn't like the way he performed last year. So one thing I know about the Warriors is that they have a great culture, they have a great foundation, and that they're a prideful organization and they're not just going to go down without swinging. And they still have a young rookie, uh, second year player that's coming in, and Pascal, who was phenomenal for them last year. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, Eric Pascal, for sure. I mean, look, Draymond's got a lot on his plate. Uh, like you, many people have charged him with getting Andrew Wiggins going. We know that Andrew Wiggins' motor has been off and on over the years. People have said one of the questions about James Wiseman is his motor. He hasn't really played enough for us to know for sure, but Draymond can be in charge of him too. It's a lot to do for Draymond this coming year. We'll have to see uh, if anyone's up to it. I know that he is. George, thank you so much for stopping by today. Please come back soon. Absolutely. And everyone else stick with us. Coming up, we are now past the draft and looking ahead to free agency tomorrow. 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN for a three-hour free agency special. I'm going to be joined by a plethora of NBA analysts, insiders. Everyone's going to be breaking down the moves. You do not want to miss it. Right now, though, it's crunch time here on The Jump. And... Oklahoma City Sam Presti at it again, acquiring more draft picks in a deal with the Sixers, which sent newly acquired Danny Green to Philly for Al Horford and the 34th pick last night, a 2025 first round pick. Perk, I talked about this a little bit at the top of the show. How many draft picks do you think Presti is planning on acquiring from here? Because he already has 17 picks over the next six years. Right, so he's trying to get as many as possible. As long as he can land Imani Bates, he's good. He's just trying to make sure he have enough picks so he can maneuver that. So when Imani Bates is up, he could get them. <laughs> he's going to be hosting the draft soon. We might have to have <laughs> Sam up at the, at the podium because he's going to be making all the picks. <laughs> give Adam Silver the year that's off. That's how I feel. <laughs> I, I know, it's just he's going to be like, and I think number two should be here, and I think number five should be there. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's talk about Trevor Ariza. He's on the move for the second time this week, this time to the Detroit Pistons. Since leaving the Rockets in 2018, Ariza has been to Phoenix, then to the nation's capital with the Wizards, then up to Sacramento, then further northwest to Portland, then back to Houston, where we thought maybe he'd end up this season, but no, now heading to Detroit. Perk, do you think Ariza is tired of moving at this point? No joke, what what kind of toll does this take on a player? No type of toll, uh, Rachel. As long as those chicks keep cashing, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he'll move to Russia, Africa, or whatever. As long as those chicks keep clearing, he's all good. I know Trev. <laughs> no doubt about it. That veteran's minimum is a nice check. And as long as people want to pay him to be in that locker room and keep himself in shape, Keep doing it, Trev. Obviously, it's tougher on the family, but hey, man, keep bringing in that money. I hope that he had like a retainer with his moving company and not a per move payment plan because that could get <laughs> that could get expensive. All right, guys, free agency just a day away. We normally don't do that right after the NBA draft, right. but this condensed offseason has made this one of the craziest mm. weeks in NBA history. And you can take a look at some of the top free agents in this year's class. Anthony Davis expected to stay in L.A. with a new deal. We'll see if that actually happens and what it's for. But other players, such as Fred Van Vliet, Brandon Ingram, they may be on the move. And let's not forget Bogdan Bogdanovich, who seemed to be heading to Milwaukee only to blow up the trade so that he could enter restricted free agency. Perk, what are your expectations for tomorrow afternoon? I think it's going to be fireworks. I'm interested in to see uh, uh, three guys. Where's Fred Van Vliet going to land? Tristan Thompson and Serge 